Lawmakers in the nation of Hungary have amended their constitution to officially recognize parents as male and female. In this video, we're going to take a look at the actions of lawmakers in Budapest, how the Prime Minister Viktor Orban is successfully rebuilding a Christian nation, and how the revitalization of the traditional family is central at reversing their demographic decline and guaranteeing a flourishing future. You are not going to want to miss this. Welcome everyone, Dr. Steve here with you, ready to bring you our latest episode celebrating the inevitable collapse of left-wing globalism and the unstoppable rise of a new conservative age. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a regular part of this channel where each and every single day we focus on optimism and encouragement in the midst of all the defeatist fake news nonsense spewed out by the mainstream media. But first, let's give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video. And that's our good friends over at Virtual Shield. Gang, if you're not using a VPN or virtual private network on your desktop, tablet, or mobile device while browsing the internet, then you know you really are exposing yourself to a lot a potential danger. But protecting yourself online, frankly, has never been easier. To make it even better, Virtual Shield is offering our audience 50% off all VPN plans and all premium add-ons. So do not wait. It is a limited time offer. Click on the link in the description below and sign up for a free 30-day trial to Virtual Shield VPN today. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. Many of you may be familiar with the Prime Minister of Hungary, Viktor Orban. I know many of you are big fans of him. He's a big nationalist populist and most especially traditionalist leader in Europe. And he's back in the news as of today. Lawmakers in the Hungarian parliament in an effort to both revitalize and protect traditional Christian values has successfully amended the definition of the family in the Hungarian constitution. Now, the amendment stipulates explicitly that a mother is a woman, a biological woman, and the father is a man. Now, this amendment, which is the Ninth Amendment to Hungary's constitution, also protects a child's right to identify with their gender at birth and a right to, and I'm quoting here directly from the amendment, a right to, quote, an upbringing based on Hungary's constitutional identity and Christian culture, close quote. The amendment passed Parliament overwhelmingly with over 130 votes in favor, only 45 against. Uh, we'll get into Hungary's political makeup in a moment, but, but again, just for your information, the original article in the Constitution read this, Hungary shall protect the institution of marriage as the union of a man and a woman established by voluntary decision and the family is the basis of the survival of the nation. Family ties shall be based on marriage and or the relationship between parents and children. So you could see the original constitutional provision was already very conservative in and of itself. But then Hungarian lawmakers at the behest of Orban went a step further with this amendment. The original article was replaced with the following, quote, Hungary protects the institution of marriage as the community of life or family formed on the basis of voluntary decision as the foundation of the survival of the nation. The basis of the family relationship is marriage and or the parent-child relationship. The mother is a woman. The father is a man. Now, what's going on here in the nation of Hungary? Well, if you're new to this channel, you got to get to know Prime Minister Viktor Orban and his Fidesz party. Fidesz is the conservative nationalist populist party of Hungary. And as you can see, they are very, very traditionalist as well. Back in 2018, Viktor Orban won in nothing less than an utter, a massive landslide. It was his third straight term overall. It was his fourth term. Uh, Orban first served a four-year term back in 1998 with a little bit of an interim a break there. He is to date the longest serving prime minister in post-communist Europe. His party, the Fidesz party, also won their third straight majority in the Hungarian parliament. They received, get this, nearly 67% of the vote, which represented a 5% increase in the popular vote from what Fidesz received in the last election back in 2014. As a result, they won a supermajority in the Hungarian parliament, which allows Fidesz to make constitutional changes if it chooses, as we're seeing here in this case with the constitutional amendment regarding marriage and the family. So... Hungary is a nation where the conservative nationalist populace, the deplorables of the world, hold a supermajority. They basically can do whatever they want. And what have they wanted to do? Well, shortly after winning re-election, 
Viktor Orban outlined his, polit his political agenda for the next four years, and he basically summed up his agenda for Hungary as building, or perhaps solidifying, rebuilding, what he's calling a Christian democracy for the purpose of reawakening a vibrant European civilization, a post-globalist civilization of a renewed Christian Europe. Now, his Christian democracy has more or less four tenets to it. First, a Christian democracy absolutely affirms the separation of powers between church and state. So we're not talking a theocracy here. The church is not the state. The state is not the church. So while it recognizes separation of powers, it emphatically does not recognize the separation of purpose. There's a separation of powers, but not a separation of purpose. The church and state are two very different institutions, but they both serve a common end or goal, which is to honor and celebrate and preserve the nation's Christian culture, customs, and traditions. So as Orban explains it, uh, this is no way, shape, or form a theocracy where nations are ruled by the church or by a council of religious leaders or anything even remotely like that. This is about the church and state working together to protect and perpetuate the traditions and customs and culture of a nation in light of the unique threats posed by the anti-cultural, anti-traditional, anti-national processes of globalization and secular aristocracy. So that's the first characteristic. Secondly, Christian democracies unwaveringly protect their national borders. And the reason for that is very simple. Open borders mean open values. Open borders mean open values. If you're going to protect your nation's cultures, customs, and traditions, you're obviously going to have to protect and enforce who can and who cannot come into the nation. And that's because open borders radically change cultures, whereas enforced borders protect cultures. So that's the second principle. Third, Christian democracies are economic nationalist in that the economy is seen as an extension of the nation's cultures, customs, traditions, rather than the culture, customs, and traditions basically eclipsed by an idolatrous commitment to economic growth. And finally, fourth, and this is obviously related to the economic nationalism, Christian democracies support and protect the traditional family. Now, before we get into that, I do want to personally invite you to our exclusive New Year's virtual conference on January 9th, 2021, 2021, to help you feel prepared for the year ahead. We're going to give you the information you need to remain strong and confident, whatever may come, precisely because we're going to give you a long-term perspective that will give you the assurance you need to head into the new year with confidence and resolve. Now, seating for the conference is limited. And to make it even better, as of today, we've got our early bird sale pricing that you can take advantage of, which ends on Friday at midnight. And if you join our Insiders Club, you can even get more of a discount. So don't wait. Click on that link below. Take advantage of our early bird registration special, which ends this Friday. And you'd be glad to know that a portion of the proceeds will go to Good Neighbors Home Repair. So not only are you going to get blessed by this event, but you're going to in turn bless others with your registration as well. So do not wait. Click on that link below and register for our New Year's virtual conference today. All right. So this appears to be a very important distinct to developing in Christian democracies around the world that have been suffering significant demographic declines, specifically in Europe. But through implementing pro-family measures, these nations have been able to effectively reverse those demographic deficits. So we're seeing concerted efforts to revitalize the traditional family, particularly in Orthodox nations such as Russia and Georgia, as well as Catholic nations such as Poland, Catholic slash Protestant and Hungary. They've all been successful in reversing decades of demographic decline. For example, in the Republic of Georgia, Georgia for a number of years has had one of the lowest birth rates in Eastern Europe. And so the Orthodox patriarch there, Ilya II, began a campaign where he promised to personally baptize the third or higher child of married Orthodox couples. He had to have at least two or more children, and then he would personally baptize them. Well, this was back in 2008. And since then, to the astonishment of demographers, Georgia has gone from having one of the lowest birth rates in Eastern Europe to today now actually having one of the highest. In fact, we're seeing a comparable demographic reversal going on in Russia and in Poland. And of course, without a flourishing, ever-expanding demography, a nation becomes inevitably dependent on immigration 
for funding its entitlements to social welfare programs. Open borders means open values, right? Which in turn ends up eventually destroying its distinctive customs and traditions. And of course, this is exactly what's been going on throughout the EU member nations, most of which are going through a severe demographic deficit since we're finding that secular globalist societies don't reproduce. They, they celebrate alternative lifestyle values, modern contraception, uh, they make it on par with traditional family. And in the final analysis, as for example, detailed in the work of University of London scholar Kaufman, in the final analysis, they're ultimately committing civilizational suicide. That's what we're finding. By contrast, Christian democratic societies celebrate the traditional family, and they see the traditional family as the foundation for a stable and moral and flourishing society. And Viktor Orban has committed himself to just such a demographic revitalization. The Orban administration has implemented a number of measures to incentivize higher fertility rates, and they're doing that by incentivizing particularly marriage, okay? Because high rates of marriage, they found, result in proportionately high fertility rates. And so the Hungarian government has instituted measures such as providing grants to married couples with children. And again, that is so key to the Hungarian strategy, which really is quite brilliant, right? The, the, the grants are provided to married. You've got to be married couples because studies show that marriage is the primary impetus for children. So the higher the marriage rates, the higher the fertility rates. That's the calculus they're operating with. So Hungary is providing grants for married couples to get their first home paid in full. And then the amount of that grant that you have to pay back is determined by how many children they have. So upon having their first child, one third of the loan's repayments would be waived. Upon birth of the second child, the couple would only have to pay back half the loan and if they have a third child, they don't have to pay back a dime. The entire lo loan is written off. It gets even better. I believe it started this year in 2020. If you've got a fourth child, you and your spouse no longer have to pay income tax for the rest of your life. Did you hear that? If you have four more children, you could get you and your you could get your house paid for completely by the government and you'll never have to pay income tax again. Who wants to move to Hungary? Right? <laughs> Got to learn the language. So now we have the data on these policies and you know the data it's nothing short of a miracle. As of January of this year, Hungary has seen an increase of nearly 10% more births and an increase of almost 100% more marriages. That means more births to come. The number of marriages almost doubled in January of this year alone, with a 10% increase in fertility. Since 2010, overall, marriage rates in Hungary have gone up 43%, and divorce rates have dropped by 23% in the same time period. So this is all to say that the latest amendment to the Constitution in Hungary, it's just par for the course of Hungary's Christian renewal. A renewal that's happening in Poland, in Georgia, in Russia, and indeed eventually the whole of Europe. Now, before you go, make sure to like this video, comment down below and subscribe to my channel. And you'll definitely want to check out my latest video. I just uploaded it on how a number of ex-military officers want President Trump to declare martial law as Congress is getting poised to actually block electors. You're not going to want to miss this. So make sure to click on the link and I will see you over there. God bless.